Okay, uh, two good questions. Um, first of all, uh, okay, we had the Marsh Society Convention in Washington three years ago, and the whole or most of the people went over to Capitol Hill on the day before the event, and we lobbied uh, many congressional offices uh, in support of the vision for space exploration. We're going to do that again this year. Uh, Marsh Society is having its international convention this year in Washington, D.C. at the University of Maryland, uh, last weekend of July going into the first couple of days of August. Uh, if you go to the Marsh Society website, marshsociety.org, you can get further information about it. Come on down. Let's go lobby Congress. Let's go tell them what's up. Um, so yes, we, we have our, our professional staff, uh, Chris Carberry and, and others, uh, are, are, are networking with uh, various uh, political people, and we're trying to get our ideas into the Obama administration. But look, you people need to get your ideas into the political process. Uh, I mean, this is what everyone, and, 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 and whether you believe in, in exactly the way the Mars Society views it, um, or uh, yeah, all right. The, there were two questions. One was about political action, and the other was uh, our views on space solar power, or my views on space solar power. Um, okay, but the, uh, you know, look, if you think that it is important for the human future that we have a space faring future, then it is your responsibility to try to make that happen. That is, after all, why we have a National Space Society. And that's why we have a Mars Society. And uh, certainly, uh, given the way things are, political action is central to the achievement of that goal. So by all means, come on down to Washington. Either go on your own or come to our convention and join us on Capitol Hill at the end of, of July where we speak to these people. Now, I, I should say here, by the way, that I believe that the vision for space exploration, or whatever it is currently called, is in great danger. Uh, it was uh, proposed on a very weak basis. Um, basically, it was a compromise between people who didn't want to do anything, i.e. Sean O'Keefe, and people who wanted to do something. So basically, what they said was, Okay, uh, you know, post-Columbia, oh yeah, NASA's got to have a goal, right, got it. Uh, okay, we'll have a goal, and we'll start working on it in 2010, but between now and then, it's going to be mostly business as usual. Um, and so, basically, when Bush got up there in tw January 2004 and said, I believe America should return to the moon and go on to Mars, we can get to the moon by 2020. Well, gee, it only took eight years to get there the first time. So what he was basically saying is, I think that America should have do great things in space, and the guy who follows me can start working on it if he wants to. Um, and so there you have it, that we've, um, okay, there is substantial work being done on the Orion space capsule, but if the goal of Moon Mars is deleted from the program, that can be very conveniently incorporated into the space program as a way to go up and down to the space station and not go anywhere beyond that. Whereas if there's no heavy lift vehicle developed, all the Orion capsule is, it's like the Russian space program going up and down to Mir, taking urine samples on astronauts and things like this, and, 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 and not going anywhere. So the, 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 the issue is, do we have a commitment, really, to go beyond low Earth orbit? And, you know, this program is currently conceived as something that the Bush people invented and is therefore, from the point of view of the Obama people, uh, completely suspect, if not axiomatically wrong. Uh, and the, now this year, the funding for NASA was sustained and in fact improved a little bit simply because they were looking for ways to spend money anywhere. Okay, as part of the stimulus package, they wanted to spend as much money as they could to prevent the economy from just crashing. And so they said, oh, NASA has got a way to spend money, give them some money to spend, and, and uh, spend it as fast as you can, please. Um, but within a year or two, that will, the, you know, give us money so we can spend it will no longer be a sufficient rationale to support a program, as, especially since uh, I believe that if the economy should start recovering a little, this massive deficit spending will uh, pose a threat of, of, of hyperinflation, and that will be the new threat. Instead of deflation, the threat will be inflation, and they'll be looking to cut the deficits. Uh, especially since the space program. While Obama has not been an opponent to the space program, it has never figured in a significant way within his portfolio of interests. So it is highly vulnerable. 
uh, unless it has a strong public base of support. Now, I also think that that public base of support can only occur if this program has a truly bold and visionary basis, which means humans to Mars. The idea of that NASA's great vision should be to return to the moon 50 years after it was there the first time. Okay? This is not going to inspire the American public, and it hasn't. There's been extremely little public interest in NASA's return to the moon program. NASA setting its goal on Mars. NASA choosing to do things because they are hard, not because they are easy. Okay? Okay. Stepping up to the plate. That is what will attract public enthusiasm and interest. NASA going to where the challenge is, where the science is, where the future is. That, that is what we need if we're going to have a space program that is worth $20 billion a year and more, as much as it needs to get the job done because it exemplifies the American spirit, the pioneer spirit of going where we've never gone before, of doing things that we've never done before, of building where nothing has been built before. Okay? That is the American spirit. That is, is what Americans will support, and that is what we need. During the campaign, you know, Obama himself said, well, you know, there's a problem with NASA. It's not inspiring people anymore. And at one point, even suggested, therefore, it should be cut. Well, he backed away from the thing that, therefore, it should be cut, because it wasn't getting him anywhere. But the fact is, if the problem with NASA is not inspiring people anymore, then the correction is not to get rid of NASA, but to have a NASA that starts inspiring people again. Now, we, we saw a little bit of that this past uh, couple of weeks with the Hubble repair mission, you know, Sean O'Keefe, bureaucrat from Central Casting, says, oh, it's too risky to go to Hubble, can't do that. Uh, and here, they went ahead and they did it, and they did it in style, and, and they also completely put to lie this assertion that anything humans could do in space, robots could do. It's inconceivable that robots could have done that Hubble repair mission if you followed what went on there with you know, both the, the planned operations, like removing 250 bolts from a thing, okay, and the unplanned uh, 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 things they had to do to make it work, uh, really shows that. So, humans can certainly do far more on Mars than robots, and in particular, humans can settle Mars and robots can't. So, this is, is what we need to do. Uh, with respect to space solar power, I'm short on time, I'll just say this. I mean, I've written a whole book on energy policy, and frankly, our real energy need is liquid fuel, not electricity. There, there's any other, there's innumerable ways to make electricity on Earth. Um, nuclear power, fossil fuels, hydroelectric power, solar power, wind power, geothermal, you name it. Uh, and, and this is the problem, is in that in trying to build a, 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 a a space economy based on the sale of a commodity which is commonly available on Earth, you run into severe problems with your business plan. It's like you could get highway gravel from the moon. There is dirt on the moon that would be entirely satisfactory for use for filler material for, for highways. But it would not make economic sense to do that. And to a consumer, a kilowatt is a kilowatt is a kilowatt. Okay? And therefore, a kilowatt from space solar power is no different from the kilowatt from Earth solar power or from nuclear power or, or in these other ways. So, the, 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 and therefore, I, I think that trying to sell space based on the fact that you will provide electricity is a, a defective argument. I think what space does provide, the thing that makes space really important. The reason why you're here is not because you're interested in some other way of getting kilowatts. The reason why you're here is that you want a free future for humanity. And that's what space is actually all about. Otherwise, none of us in this room would be interested